Aloha in our day Spread a little aloha around the world And breakfast with Bob Oh, welcome everybody back to Breakfast with Bob Not Quite Cone Edition My name is Bob Babbitt We're brought to you by Hoka One One Master Spas Clash USA, you can hyper ice Premium Plus Sports Form Sports Swim Goggles And our Challenged Athletes Foundation In 2021, we sent out 3,038 grants totaling $5.1 million to keep challenged athletes in the game of life through sport. We just had the Paralympics in one of the greatest races in Paralympic and paratriathlon history was contested between these two amazing women. We have Kendall Gretsch who took the gold and one second back Lauren Parker who took the silver and uh, Kendall, first of all, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah. Uh, just enjoying some time off after the games and then we'll get started and uh, start training for the winter season I have coming up. So in 2018, you took two golds at the Paralympics in Pyeongchang in what cross country snort Nordic and in biathlon. Yes. Yeah. So one in cross country and our distance events. And then um, the other was in the sprint biathlon race. Very cool. And growing, uh, growing up with spina bifida, did you have sport early on or was that something that came later for you? Yeah, no, I was actually a really active kid. Um, I, I didn't um, start doing adaptive sports until I was in college, but growing up, I, um, I played softball and basketball and um, I swam starting with like my neighborhood swim team. Um, I think I was maybe in third grade and then I swam all the way through high school. Um, so yeah, always active, um, but didn't really find adaptive sports until I was in college. Well, and then through Dare to Try, you were you were introduced to our favorite sport, the sport of uh, paratriathlon. Did you realize right away, you know, with the background you had from swimming that, you know what, I could be good at this? Um, I guess I didn't know if I necessarily thought I could be good at it, but I definitely knew that I was like hooked on it as soon as I did a race. Um, I think that's like a, a similar feeling that people have um, you do one and you're kind of hooked from there. And um, yeah, I think for me, one of the coolest things was just like the community that there is around triathlon. Um, you go to a race and there's so many different people there and um, so many different levels of people. And that I think was really appealing to me and kind of kept me coming back. So five time national champion in Paratri, three time Paratri world champion, 14, 15, 16. And the first time you met in a world championship with Lauren Parker, was that in 2019? It was. Yeah, I was actually thinking about it the other day. And um, just with like the way I took some time off around the 2018 games. And I think that was kind of right when Lauren was getting started. So we haven't actually overlapped at that many races. Um, but yeah, I think 2019 was our first world championships. So she Lauren. Crashed everyone. <laughs> And Lauren, for you, uh, in 2016, when paratriathlon debuted at the Games, you were an able-bodied triathlete, right? You had, you had gone pro in 2016 after getting a silver medal in Kona in 2015. Talk a little bit about finding, I mean, getting injured, first of all, but then all of a sudden finding that you could still be a triathlete. Yeah, so uh, when the Paralympics was done in 2016, I was over in Mallorca as an able-bodied athlete training for Ironman. So, and then obviously I had my accident and it changed my life completely. And I thought that I had nothing else to live for, but um, I got introduced to paratriathlon through you, Bob, and the Challenged Athletes Foundation. And, you know, after spending six months in hospital, I signed myself out and went, came straight over to San Diego to CAF and, you know, that's where it all started. I realized that it was possible to get back in the, into my sport, my sport again. And I loved training and I loved triathlon. So, you know, it was only um, normal for me to get back into the sport that I loved. So it was different. I had to learn how to use a hand cycle and use my arms for everything and the racing chair particularly because it's so technical, which was the hardest part. But uh, 
yeah, I've it's been a long journey, a tough journey. Uh, but without sport in my life and triathlon in my life, I don't know where I'd be today, to be honest. But I've had amazing support uh, from family and friends, and from especially you, Bob, and CAF. So what? What I I always love when we have a race like you guys had, right? And we're talking 106, 25, 106, 26, one of the closest fit in the world. It's, but it's one of those races that will bind you guys together forever, right? It, it's one of those things. But when you have a race like that, at the time, the person who gets second obviously is just destroyed, feeling like, oh my God, I've worked all these years and I, I don't get the gold medal. But as Lauren, have you come to the realization that, you know, hey, obviously you want to win the gold. But being linked with with Kendall and having this race for for people who are sitting at home, who are recently injured or have never gotten into sport, seeing two great athletes going head to head and, you know, one's going to come away with gold, one's going to come away with silver. Have you come to grips with that yet? I mean, I have mixed emotions. I feel like it was my greatest disappointment, Um, but to race against Kendall she's a, an absolute amazing athlete and to have a, a great race with her you know it, it showed uh tri- power triathlon to the world that um and it gave people um you know an insight into what power triathlon is and and you know people with disabilities that give, gave them hope and you know to have a, a race and a finish like that for our sport was absolutely fantastic not so good for me but um (laughs) but you know i'm happy to come second to an amazing athlete like kendall when you look back at the race right because i think kendall started because of the different level of disability that you each have kendall was like four minutes back at the beginning of the something like that like four minutes back beginning to swim and then throughout the day so you were you getting splits lauren did you have an idea that kendall was coming or not until she was side by side no i had an idea i had uh, people giving me splits on every lap and uh yeah my bike I, i guess my bike wasn't where it would normally be i wasn't particularly happy with my bike leg but um I was pushing good power and I knew but I knew Kendall was coming and I just had to get onto that run leg and I didn't have some luck on the run um you know and on the last U-turn I got stuck behind the Spanish girl unfortunately I had to slow down quite a lot and I lost a fair few seconds with only 800 meters to go so you know when I think of that it's quite frustrating um but yeah yeah that's racing Yes. That's the hard part. And, and Kendall, for you, when you're that far back, were you getting splits? Did you have a sense of, okay, I'm gaining ground here? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So kind of the same thing. I was getting splits the whole way. And um, yeah, just with the way our, our split staggered start works, I, I know that I'm starting four minutes back and have to kind of chip away at that every leg of the way. And um, yeah, I think it's it's one of those things where like, you get closer to the end and you kind of start doing the math in your head and you're like, Oh wow, this is going to be very, very close. (laughs) Um, Hopefully I can get back the time. Um, But yeah, I think, I think I kind of realized about halfway through the run or so, or maybe even before then that like, this was going to be a really close race. And um, for me at the time, I was just like, this is, this is going to be cool. Kind of however it turns out. And um and yeah, I think that was fun. It just kind of let me enjoy the moment and soak in my teammates that were there cheering and the staff that was there cheering and the Japanese people that were there cheering. And so, um, yeah, it was kind of um, a tough race, that's for sure. But yeah. it was a cool experience because I, I had a feeling it could end like that and um, yeah, be pretty cool for our sport. What did you gain from the silver in 2019 against like you, at that point, you're probably thinking at that point, the Olympics is the Paralympics is a year away. You're probably mm-hmm. thinking, okay, if I want the gold next year, this is the woman I know I'm going to have to beat. Yeah, no, definitely. I would say um, the race in Lausanne for 2019 world championships was a big wake up call for me um, because yeah, I just had this uh, like stellar overall race, but like really the, bike was incredible. And so, um, I knew that that was going to have to be my biggest area of improvement. And so, so yeah, kind of 
you know, the idea was that the one year and ended up being two years, um, was really dedicated to, to some really solid bike training. Um, and then, yeah, I kind of knew if I was able to get that under wraps and have a, a solid bike, um, that it could be a sprint finish. And I've always kind of self called myself a one gear athlete and not really good at changing gears, having different speeds. And so I knew that if there was going to be a sprint finish, I was going to have to change. And so that was something that I worked on really hard, especially the past six months with um, my strength coach and um, a lot of my run workouts were specifically geared towards that of being able to have a, a change in gears and get ready for a sprint finish. So when you're, you know, you, you'd won the national championship, 2014, 15, 16, you win the worlds in 14, 15, 16, when Paralympics are happening and, and premiering in 2016 and your category isn't in it, how, how much of a, was, was that what led you to go to a winter sport at that point? Yeah, definitely. It was just, it was kind of a um, right time, right place, right time kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So triathlon wasn't included for my category in 2016. And to that point, that's kind of all I thought about was like, oh, you know, it's going to be in the, the 2016 games and never thought about my class getting cut. Um, and so, so yeah. And, and right around that time I had moved somewhere, um, that had snow and had an adaptive Nordic program. And then our, the, um, high performance director for the Nordic program, he reached out and said, Hey, you know, you don't longer have a, a medal opportunity in triathlon this year, or, you know, in 2016, would you want to try out Nordic skiing? It's another endurance sport. Um, yeah. And so I ended up going to a camp and kind of the same thing. I fell in love with being outside and being in the mountains and, um, having that, the, the chance to race and compete at a high level. It's interesting. I was talking to Lauren. I'm like, Lauren, I think you should get into Nordic. I, I don't know if there's any, I know Aussies do downhill in para, but I wasn't sure if they, if there's a, even a cross country team or a biathlon team, but so you had to learn. Not yet. But Not yet. I'll yet. make the category. I'll make they don't, the they don't have in your category. Yeah, no, I'll make it. I'll make the category for Australia. Exactly. <laughs> Kendall, it's one thing to learn cross country skiing, but I think that biathlon of that where you're cross country skiing and then shooting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> had you yeah. had any background at all in that type of thing? No. Yeah, no, I, I had never um, like done any sort of shooting before. Um, but, but yeah, I tried out cross country into that for about a season or so. And then, um, you know, my teammates and coaches were like, try it out. They all do both. Um, it's really easy the way our schedule is set up where like every world cup has biathlon and cross country at it. So it's yep. easy to do both. Um, but yeah, I fell in love with it cause it's definitely, it's, it's like such a mental game and, um, there's a lot of kind of strategy that goes into it and, um, yeah, it just adds another layer. I guess I can't just do one sport at a time. So, um, yeah, but I, I kind of, of my winter sports, I, biathlon is definitely my favorite. Do you think that mix of, you know, you pair a triathlon, then you move right to winter. Has that helped both sports? Yeah. I, I mean, I definitely don't think it's hurt. Um, it definitely, for me, having the variety throughout the year, I've loved that. Um, I'm not a big fan of being on a trainer and training yeah. indoors during the winter. <laughs> so, no, not fun. Um, yeah, with where I live, that's kind of the reality of what training would be. And so, being able to ski gets me outside and um, yeah, we have races for the majority of the year. I'm racing nine, 10 months out of the year and um, just staying in that competitive mindset, I think has been beneficial for me. So um, there's always a kind of a rough transition between the two seasons where your, your body wants to do more, but you can't really. And so it, it's kind of rough, but um, yeah, you, you adjust and, and get into it. So we just finished up with the, with the games being delayed. We just finished up the Paralympics with your, with your gold medal. And you were the, I think the third American woman to win gold in both summer and winter, the, the third uh, woman to do that, which is awesome. Third American woman. And so then did, how much time did you take before moving into the next phase? Cause Beijing is coming up soon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's six months away. 
um, which, yeah, I think, I think it's harder more like mentally to wrap your mind around having two games that closely together yeah. going to the games. It's such like a, an emotional experience as well as physical. Um, and so, so yeah, gearing up for that mentally is it, it's hard. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've been taking this past week off and um, I'll be with family this week and then start getting back into things next week once I'm back in, in Colorado. And then um, yeah, I'll head over and, and start doing some more formal training the end of September as a team for Nordic. So after the, as somebody who's, I'm sure, lost close races in your life before, I'm sure you empathize with what Lauren went through. And I heard you guys got together the day after the, 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 the race. Why was it important for you to connect with Lauren, um, you know, on a personal level after a race like that? Yeah. I mean, I have so much respect for her as an athlete. I think, um, yeah, it, it's been so great for me to be able to have someone else that's so competitive. And, um, I think we're both, kind of pushing the sport to, to be a higher level. And, yep. um, it's great to have someone that you can be that competitive with. And so it, like, can't ask for a closer race and I think it's, it's motivating for both of us, I hope. And, um, yeah, it, like already thinking to Paris, I'm, I've already thought, I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm just going to have to work so hard because Lauren's going to want it so bad. <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> we match. For three years. <laughs> So, yeah. um, it's, it's fun. Like it's, it's cool. That's what you want. You want it to be, um, you want it to be hard. Tough. You want it, it to be easy. challenging. You, if yeah. you won the yeah. gold off the front, it's not the same as having a yeah. race like that. No, definitely not. When did you feel that you, cause even down onto the blue carpet, you were pretty far back. When yeah. did you feel like, Oh my God, I think I might be able to catch her. Um, to be honest, I, I, I think maybe it was like five feet out that I was like, okay, I think I got her. But then even crossing, I had a little bit of a moment of panic because um, like you can almost see in the video, we like veer a little bit to the yes. right, not like trying to cut off Lauren or anything. Uh, I was trying to just not run into the cameras there. There's like not that much run out. I was wondering about that we're in front of you. And so I, I hit my brake and veered off a little bit cause I didn't want to run into them. And, and so I had this moment of panic that I like hit my brake too early and it was going to be one of those things where like I passed her, but then she passed me back before the end of the line. And um, yeah, so I, I think it like didn't really sink in that it actually happened until I looked up at the board and I saw the result um, because yeah, I thought I, I thought I messed up the ending. So. Hey, so Lauren, you mentioned that uh, this race was, you know, was one of your more disappointing races. Talk a little bit about what, what do you look at as your best race? Was it that 2019 world championship? Yeah, definitely. 2019 world championship. Um, yeah, I was, uh, again, I had the goal of going into that race to become world champion. And I had the, one of the best preparations I've had going into that race and, I was able to do it. Um, it was a course that really suited me as well. I love a hilly bike course and it was, yeah, it was a challenging bike course and, you know, I loved that and it definitely worked to, to my strengths. So, so Kendall, do you see yourself doing longer triathlons besides the, beyond the sprint distance? Um, to be honest, no, <laughs> I, yeah, it, it, it doesn't really appeal to me. We, we actually were in Kona um, for a training camp leading into yes, right up before the games. Yeah. And, and so I thought, uh, we did a ride out on the queen K and, uh, we were about an hour in and it, it was pretty miserable. Like the headwind was just insane. And I was like, I'm never doing an iron man. And then on our way back in, we were like, you know, two, two and a half hours in, I'm just completely like dead. I never want to be in my hand cycle again. And, and yeah, so my first thought was I'm, I'm never doing Kona. And then my second thought was I'm never doing an Ironman and Lauren can do this and she can come in and crush the record, but it's not for me. And I'm sure when Lauren finished in Tokyo, she was like, 
if we could do this two or three more times, <laughs> I would kick her butt. <laughs> Just Probably. start over again. <laughs> that is great. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, so Lauren, what is next for you? You've, uh, you're, you're in the States now you're in Las Vegas. What now, what, what's the plans? So I head to St. George, Utah next week for the 70.3 world championships. You can still Um, sign up Kendall. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So I'm really, (laughs) I'm really looking forward to that and getting back to the long course. Uh, and then from there, I'm trying to get into Cozumel. 70.3. 70.3. Yep. Uh, I haven't got in yet, but uh, hopefully I'll find out this week whether it's a course that suits para athletes. And then from there I go to, I think it's, you pronounce it Muncie. Uh, Muncie. Yep. Yep. Um, for the 70.3, three there a week later. And then I've got about two and a half weeks before coming to San Diego for CAF. So we're thinking of uh, going to Colorado, um, to uh, Boulder. Oh, Boulder. Go to, to Boulder train. and train there yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Look at you. And you'll be back at the uh, at our San Diego Triathlon Challenge, the best day and try. I will be. I'm so and looking I, forward to it. And I'm so excited that Kendall will be there. I'm so yeah. jazzed at the <laughs> two of you. And Kendall, you have not been yet, right, to San Diego Triathlon Challenge? No, yeah. I I know a lot of people that have been and I've um yeah, I've always wanted to come. So I'm excited to be there this year. Mm-hmm. So what you said you're going to be going to Germany to do some training. Tell us about where where you'll be training and what you'll be doing. Yeah. So um, over in Europe, they have these indoor ski tunnels. And so it's basically a a one and a half K loop that they uh, refrigerate so they can keep snow in it. And so it's like this big frozen parking garage almost. And so you can ski around. They have a loop to ski on there's a biathlon range within the tunnel and so um yeah for most of the year when you don't have snow it's a great way to to get on snow and and feel what it's like to to ski on snow again because it's very different (laughs) than uh any sort of like roller skiing or cross training that we would do so kendall you went to downers grove high school i did yeah downers north yeah. yeah, so I was uh, I went to graduate school at George Williams College in Downers Grove <laughs> about four thousand years ago. Oh no way! <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> I'm like, wait a second, oh, Downers wow. Grove? I've been there before. That was so <laughs> funny. Um, and Lauren, the plan is: will you go for another cycle and go back to Paris and hopefully get your gold medal, which uh, Kendall has right now? For sure, that, that's the goal. Um, So the next three years, I'll be working so hard and so that I can get that gold medal in Paris. (laughs) I love that. And then in the meantime, will you try to do some some full Ironman events, too? Because I know that's that was your dream when you were on stage with us in 2015 in Kona, getting second, 25, 29. You went pro after that. And then 2017 was when you were going to do your first Ironman as a pro at Australia. And then April 17th, everything changed when both tires flatted you went down and went into the guardrail and were paralyzed from the waist down. But the goal is still full Ironman and hopefully Kona one day. Definitely. I mean, I was supposed to race Kona this October, but as you know, it's been postponed. So uh, I'm looking to race Kona next year. Uh, Hopefully it goes ahead. And I'm so excited to get back there on the course. And um, I probably will be hating it when I'm out there halfway through the bike leg um, <laughs> with the heat coming down on you and the wind and everything. But, you know, I, I love a challenge and the whole, I can't wait to experience it as a para athlete. So one of the things that be, besides getting a Commonwealth Games bronze medal less than a year after your injury, and then the following year getting the world championship, becoming a member of the Bahrain 13, a professional team, being the only challenged athlete, on that team, how important has that been to you? Oh, so important to be recognised uh, by the best, one of the best triathlon teams in the world. You know, I was blown away because it, the team was full of amazing athletes, board champions, Daniela Reef, for one I'd looked up to for many years as an able-bodied athlete. And, you know, I thought, wow, why why am I chosen to be part of this team when I'm, you know, and amongst all those world champion athletes. And uh, I really had to come to, you know, 
to terms with with that, that, you know, I was worthy to be part of the team as well. And uh, I had to prove that I could become world champion, which is what I did in 2019. And, uh, yeah, so to have Bahrain, uh, to have their support, uh, both financially and, you know, um, you know, pushing me to, to win those those gold medals has been absolutely incredible and um, I'm so grateful to be part of such an amazing team. So from a uh, from where you've come, and I know you wanted the gold, but you got the silver, but we're talking 2017, 2021. You've been in the sport for, for four years and where you were at when you were in rehab, not knowing where your life was going to where you are now. How do you look back on this journey? Definitely been tough. Uh, when I was laying in that hospital bed four years ago, I would never would have, um, have imagined being on the start line at the Paralympic Games, you know, four years after that. Um, or, well, I came out of hospital, so I've been doing paratriathlon for three years. And, yeah, it's been uh, so many things have, have happened over the, the last four years, so many setbacks. I've had six spinal cord surgeries, two wrist surgeries, and then another setback only 16 weeks ago or 17 weeks ago in my prep for the Paralympics with another surgery. So to know that I've had to overcome all of that and still come away with a silver medal at the Paralympic Games, you know, when I think of it that way, I, um, I'm proud of myself for just, yeah, doing that and overcoming all the things I've had to overcome. Well, and and also, and I don't know, were you guys – did you really know each other much after you raced each other in 2019? You probably haven't raced that many times. Uh, do you feel like there's more of a relationship now than there was before? Oh, definitely. You know, having a, a close finish like that definitely brings you together as athletes. And, you know, I know I always knew that Kendall was the one to beat um, <laughs> <laughs> going into the games. And it's great to have that competition and it's great to, you know, um, experience a race like that together and a finish like that together. And, you know, um, we'll be racing against each other a lot more over the next few years. And yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's a, it's a great challenge and it's great for the sport, great competition. So Kendall, do you look at that, this race? Cause you've obviously won two golds in the winter games and then you win this gold. Was that the best race you've ever had? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I think this, this race, I, I've been doing paratriathlon for nine years, and um, this was kind of like what I felt like I was building towards for the last nine years, this race. And so for it to happen and to be such an exciting race like that, it, um, yeah, I think you can't ask for anything better. And um, yeah, I mean, I think I think it's great. Like, it's it's hard when we go to these races. It's It's such a whirlwind event. You don't really get a chance to kind of like – talk to each other that much other than just right. kind of in passing. So, so yeah, to be able to have uh, the opportunity to just like talk a little bit more and get to know each other. Cause yeah, there's going to be a lot more racing and um, yeah, I think it's going to be exciting and hopefully an exciting few years leading into Paris. Yeah. To, to a certain extent, a certain extent, you guys sort of need each other. You need somebody to push you to get you to that next level. Lauren, obviously winning in 2019 pushed you to work harder, to do different weight training and do work on your sprints. How important is that to have somebody? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think like as an athlete, you're always really competitive with yourself and, um, but, it, but you can only push yourself so far. And so having someone right. else that's setting the bar for you and kind of resetting the standard is, is so important. And, um, yeah, I think it just, it makes everyone a better athlete when you have that competition. Love it. I want to thank both of you guys for taking so much time and chatting. Uh, I was, I was actually in, um, uh, Slovakia doing the USA triathlon Facebook feed. And so we did the post ratio at three in the morning. And so I was watching you guys raising it like, you know, two at whatever it was, 1.32 in the morning in Slovakia. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is like one of the greatest races I have ever seen. It reminded me of, uh, of Lisa Norton uh, getting, you know, getting the, the silver in uh, 2012 in, the, in the, uh, the Olympic Games. And, you know, they, they had to do a photo finish 
for that one. So this was this didn't need a photo, but it was pretty damn close. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for taking so much time. And we'll see both of you in San Diego in what a month or so. A little over a month. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Kendall wait. Gretsch, Lauren Parker, thank you both for taking so much time. Again, Breakfast with Bob, not quite Kona edition. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. See ya. Thank you.